mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Joseph woke up to a very unwelcome nightmare. Can you imagine what was going through his head? This was the most exciting time of his life. And engagements in those days were a little bit more serious than engagements today. At the beginning of that engagement, he would have made those marriage promises to Mary. And she would have made those promises to him, saying they would be faithful to each other until death do them part. And he was excited. He had found his wife. And they were just waiting now for that time in between when they could come together and become one flesh. Start their life together in a new home, away from their parents. But she was pregnant. Now I'm sure at first he thought these were probably just rumors. And he went to ask her about it, or at least her family, to confirm if this was true. Is she really pregnant? I mean... Joseph was never with her that way. But he knew her to be a wonderful woman who had made those promises. Could she really have been unfaithful to him? What other explanation could there be? She said this baby was from God. Really? That's the best excuse she could come up with? A God, God gave you this baby? God made you pregnant? Are you kidding me? This night when the dream comes, he is considering his possibilities. What is he going to do? He obviously cares about her. It says that he doesn't want to disgrace her. He doesn't want her to be in the public eye mocked for her unfaithfulness. And yet he's a righteous man. And this woman has shown a disregard for what marriage is before they even came together to start a life together. So how can he... Live his life with a woman who doesn't care about the will of God. He's considering, what should I do? This is a dead end. There's no good situation here. What possible explanation, what possible way can I make this better? He decides to divorce her quietly. Sadly. Distraught, I'm sure. And as he's considering these things, he's at that dead end. His life seems to have no meaning. It seems to be extremely frustrating. I'm sure he was very depressed at this moment. And as he is considering these things, tossing and turning in his bed, an angel appears to him and says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now just talk about an impossible explanation. So here, there was no, I mean, how could she be pregnant? How could this be God doing this? And then an angel appears, and everything changes for Joseph. Not only was she telling the truth about this child, that the baby was from God. Go figure. Not only is he to take her to be his wife, he is going to get married. He will have a wife. He will have a home. And he has a plan for his immediate future. But all the more amazing, this child is Jesus. The name Jesus means God saves. And God declares, this child will save his people from their sins. It tells us Joseph is a righteous man. He knew these things. He knew the scriptures. And he cared about what the Lord said and here, not only does he have a wife who is faithful to him, but now the Messiah is here. 
the promises that his people have been waiting for for generations after generations. That baby is coming to his betrothed. And he, of all people, is going to be the earthly father of God himself. Talk about a complete change of what your plans were for the rest of your life, right? I mean, I'm sure he thought about settling into a nice small town in Nazareth and he would have a very ordinary life with a, his regular carpentry job and maybe, you know, he'd save up a little bit and they'd live happily ever after. Your wife is going to have the baby, the baby, the Messiah to be born who will save his people from their sins. Imagine how intimidating that must have been for Joseph as he thought through what was going to happen. This baby is no ordinary baby. From the first moment it comes into this world, that baby is more righteous than he would ever be. And he would have to try his very best to be a good father to God. To raise him, to be in this place where someone who is perfect is living in your home. And I'm sure you parents out there think how hard it is already to parent. Just think if your child was always right. <laughs> always. And he could call you out every time that you got too angry or said something too harshly. But the beautiful thing about this baby is he didn't come to just make us feel bad about how bad we are at fulfilling, but God was calling this ordinary carpenter man to be the father of the Messiah, to help raise him, to grow him, because that child was who it was all about. It wasn't about how great Joseph would be. It wasn't how great how Mary, how wonderful a mother she would be. It's all about that baby coming to save his people, Joseph and Mary included, from their sins. Have you been in a situation like Joseph that night wrestling and turning and you don't want to go to sleep because you don't want to wake up the next day because the way your life looks at the time, there doesn't look like there's any possible explanation for anything good coming the next day. You just don't want to get up. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to get out of bed today. Because today, just there's no hope. There's no light. There's no way that God could bring something good and amazing into our life. But you know what I love about the Scriptures? Is it tells you about all these people, these experiences, where human reality meets God's love. And human reality looks so terrifying. We see such a small, small, small sliver of what's actually going on. And in that small view, especially when we're sad and we're scared, we think there is absolutely no way tomorrow's going to bring anything good, how these challenges that I'm facing today could be good for me. And then wham! God uses that terrible circumstance. You wake up the next day and lo and behold, there was some great interaction you had that day. Or the sun did come up. And even more than that, God provides you more and more opportunities to live today. But the greatest truth of all is that Jesus was born for you. So that no matter how messy that day is, no matter how many times you fall on your face, it's okay, because it's not about you. And it's not just about the world out there and how ugly it looks. But it's about a God who sees you, no matter how insignificant you feel, no matter how overwhelming the evil of the world is, or just the circumstances of your life seem to be, God knows you by name. And just like Joseph, who couldn't possibly conceive how God could use this circumstance for anything good, he uses even some of your darkest moments to draw you to Him, to have you fall down on your knees and say, Lord, I don't see any hope here, I don't see any light, so that you turn to Him and you look to that manger 
and you see God, a little baby who came to Mary from Hodunk, Nazareth, and Joseph, the most insignificant son of David. He wasn't a great king or anything. And from them comes this little baby wrapped in human flesh who is Emmanuel, God with us. He says, look at that manger. Celebrate Christmas. Because that baby shows that in the impossible situations, when you can't think of any possible explanation for why things are happening the way they are, he says, look to the manger to see how much more I know and I see and I care, how much more I love you than you think. That's the beauty we see here with Joseph. That's the beauty we see in the manger with that baby born. That's the beauty we see when the angels appear to shepherds who are just out doing their daily thing, watching the, shepherd, watching the sheep at night. And they think, wow, I mean, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And then these whole army of angels appears in the sky and says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He'll be wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This tiny, little, insignificant baby, to you, shepherds, has been born. Just like Joseph, we are not worthy of the opportunities that God puts before us. We have people that we will interact with every day. And you know of this Jesus who brings hope to your darkness. He tells you even when you're on the brink of death or financial ruin or you are surrounded by the consequences of your mistakes or let's say it had nothing to do with you and something seemingly random happens to you and yet you know that because God loves you, because Jesus came, that even in those circumstances, God still loves you and has a plan and will bring you to be in eternity with Him forever. You who hold that beautiful treasure of what the Savior, who He is, and what He means to you, God has given you that news. He has given you a place in His kingdom to share that joy with others. Will you be perfect at it? No. <laughs> I'm sure Joseph made many mistakes raising Jesus. And yet God has chosen you to share the joy of Christmas with the people around you. And you want to know why? Because without God, there's not always a possible explanation for the things going on. Sometimes they need an impossible explanation or expectation. And that's what you give them with Jesus. God tells us that we can imagine more than what we see just in front of us. When everything seems to be wrong and there's no possible way out, we know there is. Because God doesn't play by our rules. He plays by His rules. He who sees all things, who created this world, who created you, and even in a dark and broken world has shown light that pierces and destroys the darkness and the power of death and the devil. And He says, there is peace in this broken world, that you will be saved and live forever, even though they die. He gives you that joy to share with someone else in their darkness. You have the most beautiful treasure to give. Like Joseph, listen to the angel who says, This is the reality. Wake up. Take Mary to be your wife. Do not be afraid, for he is Jesus. God saves. Emmanuel. God with us. God says to you in his word, be at peace. Know me. Know that you are forgiven. Know that you are saved. And know that you are a part of my plan, my kingdom work, to share this peace with the world. Trust him who has called you and made you his children and preach the beautiful truth that the baby born in Bethlehem means peace to all people. It means that God has come to save His people from their sins. Amen. Please rise.